these right here are bullet holes that were left by the Russian army when they invaded this village and they tried to take the capital city of Kiev. Like the big part of Mashun, like it was destroyed. And today I'm headed to a small village outside of the city called Moshun, I believe, which was attacked by the Russian army. And today we're going to see what are volunteers here in Ukraine doing to help rebuild these villages and these cities here. But first, we've got to try to navigate the Ukrainian metro system. You guys really have a lot of escalators to make it all the way down just to the platform. I cannot believe you'll have deep stations like this. That's crazy. This is the part I was worried about, Mike. I don't know what any of this means, but beautiful train stations. We love the sculptures. Definitely. Yes, yes, like uh, we've been like uh, cleaning all the rubble and stuff like, uh, I mean, all, like over a year now, I think. More than and, a year, yes. Yeah, more than a year. And yeah, uh, most of civilians were evacuated, but some still died. Okay, y'all, we have made it to the village of Moshun, which is about, which is right outside the capital of Kiev. And coming here, you can really see the destruction. Like, yes, I saw destruction in Lviv, but you can see black, black char on the bricks where possibly more than likely a fire was. And just walking around this rubble and seeing that this was a home, someone's home, and was destroyed by the Russian army. Like, I, I can't even put it into words right now. So what are you guys gonna be doing today? We're going to dismantle these walls and all the bricks, take them back, backyard away. Під час російської агресії в нашому подвір'ї були два будинки. От вони всі згоріли. Тут раніше проживала моя прабабуся, і вона коли померла, а батько тут зробив майстерню. Бачимо. А тут станки були, тато робив вікна, двері, все з дерева. Ну і тут дуже багато дерева було на горищі, вона все згоріла. Во. І я звернулася в фонд Б-50, вони розбирають завали, ну, от, в принципі, цим вони тут і займаються. Росли. How long have you been uh, volunteering with this group? Uh, I've been volunteering for six months, but I've been working three times. Three times? Yeah. Thanks. And then what is the name of the group? Uh, B-50. B-50? Yeah. And what do y'all try, what is y'all's mission? To, uh, to help uh, people to clean up all this area because... All the destruction? Yeah, because it's uh, expensive to break this all down to the foundations uh, and uh, after only after that uh, people can construct new buildings here. And then I, I feel like because I'm from Texas, right, yeah. the U.S., that everyone just sees the news when it comes to, like, Russia invading Ukraine, all the destruction, all the death, but no one really sees that even though y'all are fighting a war, y'all are also still building, just rebuilding all the villages and the cities that have been destroyed. I feel like most people don't get to see that side, that y'all are this strong and still doing this even when a war is going on. Yeah. Oh. Uh, you know, uh, life is um, go um, just ahead, go just mm -hmm. ahead, and we need to work, we need to help. Uh, uh, if we see we can help, we just do it, because it's a lot of work, uh, not on only on the front line, but here. Um, um, so any time I could be called to, to the... Um, service? To the service, yeah. And then, uh, what was your name again? Mikola. Mikola. Mik Mikola. Mikola. It's like Nikki. Mikola. Now I want to say it the Ukrainian way. Okay. I'm Davion. Awesome. Or we can just do this too. Yeah. Okay. Nice to meet you. As well. 
Okay, so they've started to dismantle the the home, and it seems like they have a system when it comes to loading up the bricks and actually bringing them over here. So again, with the bricks. It seems like y'all have a system. Yeah. You have a pretty, pretty good system. Yeah, it's pretty much simple. So right now we're trying to find the memorial that apparently pre so right now we're trying to find the memorial for this village for the battle of motion motion yeah. motion for the battle of motion and president Zelensky actually visited this but the guy said it was at the end of the road and we don't see we got to ask somebody yeah. Right that way. This way? Yeah. <sighs> that is one thing about... That is one thing about small villages is people are very willing to help. Yeah. A, lot, a lot easier. My man just popped his head over the fence and asked where, where's the memorial at? So we made it to the memorial for the village of Motion. Um, what does it say? And what was the significance of this place? This place is significant because it's the last border uh, before the Kiev, and uh, the memorial says it's uh, uh, named after the angels of defense of this uh, village, uh, who changed the way of the war and become the shield of the Kiev at the March 2022. And you said that this place here in the forest is a memorial to some of the heroes that were fighting um, in the Battle of Motion? Yeah, it's a memorial named after the defenders of Motion. And these are different units that were fighting? Uh, on the border of them. Okay. Uh, we call them blindash. Blindash, what does that mean? It's uh, like a front line where it uh, keeps you from being shot and you they were on the front line. Yeah. Just right there. The further you go into this memorial, you can see that the Ukrainian army withstood the Russian assault. And I just want to make it clear that the troops that Russia sent here, they sent airborne troops here, they sent air assault troops here. So it's not like Russia sent troops that were unprepared and not trained at all. The Ukrainian army they withstood paratroopers, and I was a paratrooper, an airborne soldier in the United States Army, and they have, they have more training. But the Ukrainian army was strong, and they pushed them back out of this village. But about this memorial, it is a living and breathing memorial for the heroes that stood here and, and pushed the Russian army back. So you can actually see the trenches that they were using here. You can see the military equipment that was being used here. And when you walk around this memorial, you can see photos of the heroes. You can see flowers, teddy bears honoring what they did for their village, what they did for their country. I'm gonna be honest, I've, I've never seen anything like this before. And again, I've never been in a war. I've never seen, I've never been to a country, I've never been to a country that was at war. But this memorial, it really does honor the heroes that fought in the Battle of Motion. Were you here uh, during the, the invasion? And what was it like? Did, uh, did Russians um, make it to your home? Did you see them come? How did it how did it feel when the Ukrainian army pushed them back? Вони русські дошли до начала села. Там уже була последня оборона, і там туди їх далі просто вже не пустили. І отсюда почали їх вибивати і пішли туди в сторону Чорнобиля. Їх туди загнали до Білорусі назад. 
And this home, um, so your home was destroyed and this was gifted. It says at least with the sign from the U.S. And then, hmm, what does it mean to be Ukrainian to you? Ukrainians are being good. Ukrainians are a good nation. Just to see what they did, they were forced to leave our land. Ми не робили такої біди, бачите, розбивали. 2800 домов у нас тут розбили. В машині? Так, 90% села. Це був останній рубіж перед Києвом, куди їх далі не пропустили. Це був останній стан. Так, останній стан. Ви зробили і пустили їх. Так. І що був ваш ім'я, сир? Що був ваш ім'я? Як вас звати? Мене Юра. Дев'ян. Найс на мітчі. Приятно. Це булет холлс from when the Russians actually attacked. And you will see these all throughout the village. More bullet holes. And this is a civilian village. There is no military complex here. But this place was highly important. It was the last stand before actually making it to the city of Kyiv, the capital. So you're planning to do a, a barbecue today for mm -hmm. all the volunteers? Yep. What are you gonna be cooking? It will be uh, chicken, 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 and the chicken, bread. Chicken, chicken, and bread. Chicken, chicken, and bread and cheese. Kind of. So what do we got here? Chitron. Barbecue. Chitron. Foie gras. Truffles. So after you guys work, is this usually what y'all do? Mm, Gather around and eat together? In this location, uh, the second time here. You Not the second, second time. It's usually like we're here for two months. Thieves. No. no. It's really good. It's Georgian bread with uh, some cheese melted uh, on the electric grill. Okay. You need to taste it. It's like it's called kvass. It's made from bread and uh, <laughs> brood, brood bread. So what does it taste like? It's almost need... like beer, but uh, it's sweet. Um, no alcohol. No alcohol. It's, uh, without no alcohol. alcohol. I heard something like this uh, in uh, Lithuania. Okay. <clears throat> it's very good when it's hot. Hot? Uh, hot. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me. I mean, when it's I was like, hot, whoa, hot, hot cider. Don't, don't believe. All right, well, let's get, give us a try. Definitely does smell like beer. You guys are all it's just not beer. <laughs> I mean, I love beer too, so. <clears throat> oh, that's really good. That's really good, actually. Hmm. Do I just dig in? Or? Take this. Okay. Take you this. can take a plate if you want. Yeah. All right. All right. Take plate, put meat and... Like in Russia. Appreciate rest, it. No? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great bread. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you. With like full mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So this is what it looks like when Ukrainians are working together and they're not fighting in the war, but they're still giving back to their country, volunteering, dismantling a house, even when it was built so great and it's so hard to tear down. Coming together, passing around raspberries, laughing, drinking tea, eating chicken and just being normal human beings. <clears throat> Oh, these are great raspberries too. <laughs> I don't know if if I can say it. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> I say we are normal human being in absolutely abnormal circumstances. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> fucking abnormal. Man, you guys oh, know how to do. You guys know how to do hard work and then play hard. <laughs> This is really sweet. How is it? Very good. Very good? I'm not sure I'm not sure if y'all remember what this place used to look like before they started dismantling this building, this house, but they are putting in work. They are moving so many different bricks. 
And you know, everybody was putting in 100% effort. People were doing different things. People were taking the rocks, the bricks, and they were putting them into the wheelbarrow. People were pushing the wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow back and forth, and everyone was switching jobs. People were using the sledgehammers. It's tiring. Yeah, very tough for watch fan because you need to accelerate. You'll build, you'll build very strong buildings. Uh, it's, I'm not building, I'm just destroying. Ukrainians. For now. Uh, yeah. Coming together and pulling down complete walls. all by hand. This was all done by humans, by hand. And then the owner of the building, that the owner of the house that stood here, she was out here working alongside everyone, shoveling the bricks, putting it in the wheelbarrow. This is what I mean when I say that Ukrainians are strong people. Even though Putin thinks that he can just erase the Ukrainian people, killed their spirit, take this country over in just three days? No, that did not happen and that will never happen. The Ukrainian people have my heart and I hope that the rest of the world will continue to support them. And the people that are not supporting them yet, please support Ukraine. My name is Davion West. I don't know where I'm headed to next, but I hope I can tell more stories like this. Slava Ukrainian. Pause. I'm so sorry to all my Ukrainians. That was terrible pronunciation. Slava Ukraini.